Good morning. Bit of a late start this morning. It's nearly eight o'clock. But yeah, when our alarm clocks went off this morning, we were like, nah, not gonna happen. That's the problem with the snow walking. Well, one of the many, many problems with the snow walking. The snow doesn't just beat you up literally and physically, but also mentally. It's just very exhausting. So as soon as our heads hit the pillow of an evening, we're gone. And as I said, in the morning we're like, oh, really? But we're in an area now where I don't think it kind of matters so much. I don't think that the snow really gets that solid overnight anymore, so this getting up a little bit later isn't... Whew, totally out of breath, why? <laughs> it's not uh, killing any advantage you might have had. Oh, there's the trade junction to Paradise Lake, which means that we're actually on the trail. One does never cease. First climb of the morning almost done. And on once the switchback started, thankfully, snow free trail. Just a little glimpse of how pleasant hiking in Northern California could be if you weren't battling the snow all the time. It is very pretty and these sections here, both section K and section L that we're in now, should be such easy going. They should be, you know. The kind of areas where you really make up miles after the Sierras because, you know, the hills are all 500 foot climbs, 600 foot climbs. Even Dick's Pass that nearly killed us is only 9,500 foot high. The climb up was only 1,500 or whatever. Really nothing strenuous or too strenuous. She says huffing and puffing. <laughs> but yeah. When it's covered in snow and you don't know where you're going. It takes a while. What do you reckon? Well, More hiking like this? Seems like it. Oh yeah. <laughs> be getting twenties in. Yeah. That's kind of what I was well, thinking. Well, Oregon. <laughs> Indeed. Make up some miles out of the snow. And another wooden bridge, this time over White Rock Creek. And the carbon copy of where we were yesterday, really. There's supposed to be camping spots around flood tent sites, but everything's flooded. There's the little bits amongst the trees, but... Another little ascent. Another mostly snow-free path. That seems to be the MO for this area, really. It's the south side ascent, so all snow-free. North side descents are a free for all. That's a nice area. Right. Does your hair look alright? Your hair is fine, it's the face underneath it, it's the brother. <laughs> shaggy. So these are these fields that I was too depressed to film yesterday. These sun cup fields where you've got all these riches everywhere. And it looks nice and cute. But it's really hard because you kind of walk into the dips, then your foot is the shape of your foot or the direction of your foot is determined by the size of the hole. So if you're unlucky, it gets twisted. So usually it's better to walk on top of the ridges, but when once the snow gets soft, then those ridges collapse and if you fall into those holes again, that dictate which way around your foot points. If your knee at that point happens to point a different direction. Again, you know, it's... <laughs> these are quite painful to walk through. Which is weird because it actually means that in this section the worst bits are the flat bits. Because <laughs> that's where these things accumulate. <laughs> well, it's fine. It's only early so we're not annoyed. Yet. <laughs> we haven't fallen on our ass yet. That's what usually happens. It's like after the tents slip and fall. You lose your sense of humor, oddly enough, but yeah, it's still early. Lunch break. 
We're celebrating, regaining the trail after a lengthy absence. <laughs> Tent got a bit of condensation overnight, so that's doing its thing over there. But a horrible moment when we thought we'd lost one of the most important things we have here on the trail. Our Swiss Army knife. I mean, you know, we can cope with losing the trail and sliding in snow and nearly drowning in river crossings, but if you lose the thing that slices your cheese, you might as well go home. And you think you found the PCT? PCT time! <laughs> yeah, that's not buried in snow at all, is it? Pacific Crest Trail. Oh. Okay. Fine. Jackson Meadow. I can't even read what it says above it. Never mind, can't we? To Jackson Meadow. Yeah. That was a bit of a scramble. We really did lose it there. We were way down and over there somewhere. But yeah, we're back on now. <laughs> How could we miss a trail this obvious, eh? Wow, almost on the top of Lazy Peak now. Look at these views. Look at that. I think it's a reservoir. It's like half still snowed and half melted. That pretty much sums everything up here. So we sat down for a little break. Just over there. Off the climbing Lazy Peak. Um, and we had a little play on gut hooks and looked, you know what the future held in terms of campsites and we didn't like the sound of was unburied in snow on the 21st of June and we didn't like the sound of does get frequented by bears so we set up here <laughs> which is about I don't know this thing was established so this could be one of the campsites or it could just be something that people I mean obviously not the fire the fire ring was established so we don't light fires if there isn't an established fire ring um, it's right at the top, but surrounded by trees, so it's reasonably sheltered, hopefully, should the wind come up. And uh, yeah, that's us for the night. Yeah, Early night. Huh? We've only got 20 miles to do. Yeah, we've only got 20 miles into Sierra City, so why rush? We don't want to get there for an evening. We have to get there for the post office, which is only open between 10 and 2. So there's no point getting there off an afternoon or too early in the morning, so... If the snow ends, and you know, it has to end eventually, we could actually do 15, 16 miles tomorrow and set ourselves up for a really, really easy stroll into Sierra City. I think that's our general direction. We can see water in the distance. That could be Jackson Reservoir. And it doesn't look like there's any more snow. So, we started with our little campsite here. A bit late, but you know. And uh, started our ascent, which uh, <laughs> well, all of today basically was very mixed. It was a lot of 50 50 snow and not snow, so you made reasonable progress. Um, <laughs> this campsite here was the, the spitting image of that one down there. It's uh, yeah, the, the wooden bridge is beautiful, you can see it. Everywhere that was flat around it is now underwater and probably will be for another week or so. So, um, yeah, what can you do? Um, yeah, and then we just carried on in what what is generally considered an undulating area. It's, it's you know, small ups, small downs. We did lose... Um, we did lose the, the pass like massively somewhere, I think it was still okay here, somewhere on the way down here. We sort of wound up over there somewhere on the, oh no, down there, because we had to follow, no, no, here, uh, because we had to follow that dirt road once we found it, south. Oh, and here we were on the dirt road most of the time, because it just, that one was, was visible. And as you can see, there's this dirt road pretty much ghosts. The PCT so once we had found that we just followed it up to a point where you know it seemed easy enough to, to go up and then regain the PCT up there but it's just yeah 
you know, when you can't see where you're going, you might as well follow something that goes in the right direction. And then, as I said, on the descent here, we kind of lost it somewhere. We must have just gone straight ahead here and ended up climbing up that dirt road again to um, to the crossing. And then ascended Lazy Peak, which continues on the next map. Yeah, so to continue, Lazy Peak. And uh, we're somewhere, I mean, I don't know whether we've actually reached this campsite where we're camped now. If not, we're somewhere here on the approach to it. Um, somewhere just beyond the peak. 